What's up, everybody? Afro Joe here, Tan Like T.I. is again. Uh, now, the five people that you see in front of you is uh, five guys that's been accused of a crime they didn't commit. First, uh, hold on, before we go any further, I know y'all goes first thing. Y'all gonna say, oh, Afro Joe, you're gonna get on your soapbox and start doing that whole racist shit again. No, I'm not, because it's not a racist shit. In New York, yes, it is, because it's period up in New York. But there's another story I want to add to this video that y'all probably think, oh my God, he's telling another story about a same situation, a same situation, but different. Instead of the second story, instead of five guys, be three. But it's like this: these five guys was accused of rape in New York City at Central Park. The police has been getting reports of teenagers uh, getting reports of teenagers going through New York City assaulting people. Uh, it says on uh, on April 19, 1989 a slim built 28 year old banker was violated assaulted with while jogging in New York City Central Park, she was raped and beaten almost to death. When found about four hours later, she was suffering from several hemorrhaging and blood loss from multiple. Like they beat it, like the per, like they said that these five beat her ass, but which is bullshit. And her head and her skull was fractured. Badly that it left her left eye. Her left eye was removed from the socket. And she almost died. And she ran, she had a permanent hernia due to the injury. Remarkably, she largely recovered. She recovered. Nigga was disabled. Was she was disabled? Lost a vision. Had no memory of the attack. Of any of any event up to the what happened. It says the crime was one of a, one of uh, 3,254 rapes report of New York City that year in that park and and it was and it's fucked up it says according to the police investigation that there was a gang of teens who was assaulting strangers at, as part of an activity that became known as wowing wowing New York City detective said that they, the word was used by the suspects themselves describing the action to the police. According to the this book by the journalist, see, what happened was, like I said, there was teenagers going around wild, whatever this word, wild. This is the 80s now, 1989, where teenagers was going through Central Park beating the shit out of people. Now these five kids got accused of something they didn't do. They didn't do. Call them, uh, something that they didn't do. I'm gonna put the story in the description box. I'm gonna put two stories in the description box. And uh, and they spent half all their teen life, all their teen lives in prison for a crime they didn't commit. They spent when they was arrested. They sat in the interrogation room. For 15 hours until they finally broke down and told the police what the hell they wanted to hear. These were five teenagers. Five teenagers. Four blacks and our Hispanics sitting up there telling the police what happened. Don't even know what. Like for real though, like they didn't know what was going on when they when the st police officer brought when the detectives brought this shit to their attention. Oh, you was arrested. You've been arrested for rape and almost an attempted murder. They didn't know what happened, and they got sentenced to years in prison for a crime they didn't commit. And it was kind of fucked up how each one of them got sentenced to a crime that they didn't get commit. The oldest one was 16. How the how these kids' families turned on them because they believed they did it. They believed they did it, and they wish they didn't.
Now in two thousand now this now this is sad. Now, I feel bad for these kids because they got robbed of their child of their teen years, their youth, for a crime they didn't commit. Because the police in New York City didn't want to do their fucking job. They wanted to blame the the closest person to them. Oh, we're gonna blame this person or blame that person, blame this person. They spent like up to thirteen years to between thirteen or fifteen years in prison. 13 to 15 years in prison for a crime they didn't commit. And in 2002, a man was uh, a man was uh, confessed to the crime of the actual crime. Now the woman, actually the woman, the woman that got hurt was named Trisha. The woman that got, the, the, the victim was named Trisha, the woman that got hurt. But the, the guy, the person that really did it was Martinez Reynes. Reynes. He confessed to the crime to one of the five kids that was falsely accused of a crime they didn't commit he confessed to a crime he did, he, conf he confessed to the crime he knew what went down because he described because the Mar Mar Martina Rena Renas whatever he told the police what really what happened from detail to detail and plus the DNA matches his DNA it did not match None of the five kids that was accused. After this happened in 2002, and all five of them guys got released, and their records is sponge because they finally caught the real rapist. Now the five are are suing New York City. Are suing New York City because of wrong, wrongful identity. And falsely, not I don't know how long I'm like wrong for identity, but they're suing. They're suing New York City, but they made a movie. It's called The Central Park Five. And uh, I felt kind of bad for these people. Like they got a like they they was convicted of a crime that they didn't commit. And they finally caught the guy. This happened in 1980. 1980s. This happened, well, let's see, 19. Like 23 years ago. This happened like, what, 23 years ago. And they caught this guy in 2002. And he confessed to the crime. And the DNA matches his. Uh, well, they're suing the city for racially discrimination and emotional distress. It happened in late 2009. The suit is yet to be settled. All five of them suing them. But, like I said, it is wrong for what happened to them. It's very fucked up. See, this is, is what's wrong with the police today. They jump to conclusions. They're ready to blame whoever for whatever. Without even taking a look at the evidence, they'll just oh he did it without even finding evidence on the person, or they'll make up some kind of piece of evidence to throw the person in jail. Now I said there's going to be a second story that is similar to this but different. The Memphis Three. Now you see there's three guys you see that before and after picture, before when they was in their t when they was kids and after. When they're grown, actually, yeah. Now, these kids, the Memphis Five, not the Memphis Five, but the Memphis Three, was arrested of a crime that they didn't commit of killing three kids that they did not do. Nowhere near it. It happened in Memphis, Tennessee, three hours away from. My hometown. This happened in the 90s. This happened in the 90s. Now, this is funny. 
Now this is now this is fucked up. I told you that the Central Park Five got the records in Sprunch and they found the real guys, the real guy that did the rape and the beating. But the Memphis Three, they still have a record even though they was found not guilty because the DNA didn't match. The crime did not fit them because DNA didn't match and DNA didn't match evidence didn't point to them and they still got a record they even got Johnny Depp the Dixie Chicks to back their asses up and they still got a record for for a murder not one murder three murders of three little boys now you see in the before pictures like the before pictures the long black hair, the, the, the guy in the middle with the long dark hair, they looked at him because he was goth. They thought satanic, they, when they found the bodies of the kids, they thought satanic ritual. So they looked at him as the guy that did it. They looked at him as the guy that had something to do with it, which it was a fucking lie because he was dressed in black and and I thought it was just retarded because I thought it was retarded because they got arrested for a crime they didn't commit they, they story their story's been on 48 hours they showed it twice like several times if you probably watch it go on ID and they show it watch it they break it down it actually it was called the West Memphis 3 but it was called the Memphis 3 three men who was trying to uh, was convicted as teenagers in 1994 of the 93 murder of three boys in West Memphis Arkansas well not Ar well not men like not Memphis, Tennessee, but Memphis, Arkansas. Damn. One of them was sentenced to death. One of them was sentenced to uh, life in prison, plus 20 years sentence. And the last one was sentenced life in prison for a crime they didn't commit. These three guys, this happened in not Memphis, not Memphis, Tennessee, but Memphis, Arkansas. That's, that's what it says. I think it's Memphis, Tennessee. I don't know if there's a Memphis, Arkansas. But it was three eight-year-old little boys. Report said on May 5th, 1993, the first report to the police was made by one of the kids' adopt, adoptive father around 7 p.m. The boy was a alleged last seen together by three neighbors who in sworn told that they was playing together around 6 p 6 30 p.m. in the evening disappeared and saw Terry Hobbit's stepfather of the kid Stephen Branch Stephen Branch called them to come home but the funny thing is, but the funny thing is, when they was investigating this, one of the three little kids, like I said, this kid's stepfather called him home, but the police did not put that in the report. They didn't even, they didn't put that in the report. They didn't even ask the fucking neighbors, man. They didn't even ask the neighbors, man, what went down. One of the kid, the the stepfather, they called that kid home. To, uh, what was it? Uh, Stephen Branch. His stepfather called him home and had. Now Stephen Branch always carried his pocket knife. Stephen Branch had a pocket knife. But how did his stepfather Terry Hobbs have Stephen Branch, Stevie's Branch? Pocket, pocket knife and the, like I said the neighbor that lived up the street that saw Stevie Branch with the two other boys Michael Moore 
and Christopher Bryan. Breyer. The neighbors saw Terry Hump called them three little boys to come home. Next day you know it, their bodies is across town in a lake. Two bikes were sitting out there. I've seen I've seen the photos, man. It's not even pretty. I've seen the photos, man. You can look. And I thought in my life, I thought, man, that I would never see something like this. I'm going to actually show you the pictures of the two little boys that actually was killed. And it actually, it's actually bad that these three, the before, like you see it's the before and after pictures, these three got accused of a, of murder. Same as them other five dudes that got accused of rape. Evidence didn't point to them. Evidence didn't say it was them. Evidence said nothing about these people, but they got accused and arrested for it. So they were sentenced, they were spent all their li half their lives in a penitentiary for a crime they didn't commit. Come on now. It happens every day. Now these are the three little boys that got killed. Stevie Branch is the one on the right. He's the one, the stepfather, that called all three of them little boys. And all three of their bodies ended up in the light blood everywhere in the light and, and, it, and it's bad to see see pictures like it and they still and, and like I said it, it's sad to see that they still got a record and the parents that sat there the, the parents that was there that was blaming them that was blaming them changed their mind in 2000 and uh, what, what, what like in 2000 changed their mind and when it came like in mid 2000 the parents finally realized it wasn't them because Stephen Stephen Branch Stephen Branch's mother. Okay, I'm putting a better picture of these guys, but these are the guys, right? Right, better picture. But Stephen Branch's mother noted when she noticed that her boyfriend, her new husband, had her son's pocket knife. She knew that the the, the them three boys didn't do nothing so the, some of the parents in the neighborhood the parents of the of the, of, of the three boys realized that they really didn't do it there was nowhere near the scene there was not even there now you see the bald headed guy in the middle you see his before and after picture the bald headed guy in the middle when they was prosecuting this prosecuting him. They interviewed him first and he's slightly slow. They said that they was it was a satanic ritual. Now the guy on the left with the long black hair, his before picture, he was into it because he was gothic. The guy on the end, the blind guy on the end, on the right, he wasn't. But the guy in the middle lied it's a yeah when they slammed a book down on the table and it says Satan on Satan on it he asked what's Satan the question was what Satan he didn't know how to read that good he was questioning what Satan now everybody knows as a Satan like he, he didn't know what Satan how to read the word Satan 
he saw as satin. Now these people been thrown in jail for for a crime, like I said, for a crime they didn't commit. You got the Memphis Three, you got the Central Park Five. Now come on, y'all, y'all gonna tell me something ain't going on? People getting accused of something they didn't do? Come on, something's really up. This is not about nationality. This is about justice. How some of the, how the justice system is fucked up. <laughs> and I'm gonna do another video after this. But this story is these two stories are fucked up. Like I said, they're similar, but they're different. Similar, but they're different. Five boys got convicted of rape and beat, beating and raping a woman that they didn't do three guys got convicted of murdering three little boys that they did not murder and you can't sit there and tell me that something ain't going on this happened in the late 90s I mean late 80s early 90s this has been going on for years and it still goes on today every day every day is the same thing and I question this so much because is this what's really going on? The prisons are filling up with innocent people while the guilty is walking out, raping, doing whatever. Like I told you, I did a video and I, I actually brought, the, brought this up in several videos I did. A guy murders a, murders a woman. Happens in my hometown, Nashville. A guy murders a woman. And he confessed that he did it. Evidence point that he did it. Con confessed on tape to the detective that he killed this woman. But the judge threw it out because the judge threw it out because they didn't read him his Miranda rights. See what I'm saying? If they can let a murderer won't get back, walk the streets and murder whoever again, but they can see this is what this is what pisses me off so much. Innocent people getting locked up every day while the real criminals are walking the street, <laughs> and ain't nobody sitting up here questioning this shit. Y'all too big. People are too damn busy bitching about Obama. See what I'm, see what I'm saying? That's how it is. Shit like this happens and there's fuckers bitching about Obama being president. Why? Why? Why Why? why is that? Y'all care more about what the president about what color is your president and his name and what his father religion is but y'all can't sit up there and care more important like why is innocent people getting locked up y'all care more about the color of your president's skin than people innocent people getting locked up doesn't matter if you're black or white it doesn't matter if you're black white Chinese Asian gay straight whatever there's, there's innocent people getting locked up for crimes they didn't commit but y'all are sitting on your ass caring more about the color of your fucking president's skin and the and religion it shouldn't matter who's running the country it should matter about people getting convicted of crimes they didn't commit I sat there and saw several stories man where people getting arrested for something they didn't do oh but oh Obama he's a mud runner Okay, so your son or daughter are getting arrested for a crime they can commit. They didn't commit. You don't give a fuck about that, but you care about the color of your fucking president's skin. Why is that? I'm giving you two stories that happened. And there's like three minor different races. No, three races right there. Black, Hispanic, and white. And y'all and y'all, y'all gonna do is say, you, 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 you racist. I gave you two stories with people that got convicted of something they didn't do and it pisses me out that that's all it is to people they care more about what the fuck 
like, I understand you should care about what the fuck your government's doing, but when it comes down to shit like this, I think people need to pay more attention to what's really going on than paying attention to and trying to impeach Obama or getting mad because he's got a Muslim's name and his father is Muslim. This is every damn day, man. Your kid can go to jail for something he didn't do, but your bitch ass don't give a fuck about that, but you care about your president. You care more about your president's color or religion than you do your own fucking kids. I'm t it's, it's just saying how <laughs> like I did one video uh, several videos about crime doesn't pay it really doesn't but it just it just makes no sense on how short minded people is about life about what's really going on like when your relative has been taken away from you for a crime that they didn't commit you want to go around asking people for, for help and you should ask people for help Go and, and one thing about it is home. one thing about it is these five guys these five men was dragged through the mud so fucking badly that the media lied on them don't you know that these people still get looked down upon still get looked down on because what the media said, what the police did, even though their sponge has been wiped clean. Like, their record's been a sponge. Same with these guys. These guys can't even get a job, even though evidence showed they are innocent. They still got a record, and they can't get a job. See what I'm saying? This is today. This is this what's going on in our country. This is what's going on in today in our country, but oh, I forgot people's lives are not important, but the color of your president and the and the religion that he practiced is more fucking important than somebody else's life. When that preacher, when that preacher's wife killed, when that that preacher's wife killed her husband, y'all went fucking ballistic like I ain't nothing. Same with Casey Anthony. When she, when they found her innocent, y'all went fucking ballistic. But when we got a black, when we got a colored president, y'all want to act a fucking fool. But this, that's how it is. Two story, two cases where eight people was convicted of a crime they didn't do. Eight people was convicted of a crime they didn't do. There's is it really like that? Is I'm I don't even like I, I, it, it. It pisses me out because this happens every day, every day, every day, every motherfucking day, and ain't a damn person doing nothing about himself. Sitting up there worrying about what color Obama is and what his fucking religion. That's it. That's all y'all care about. Y'all don't care about nobody else's life, but y'all care more about trying to impeach a fucking president than somebody getting arrested for a crime they didn't commit. Okay. Fuck y'all motherfuckers. Be like it. Be some dumbass, closed minded asshole pieces of shit. Because that's all it is. That's all it is in today's societies. People care more about somebody's fucking religion. Oh, Obama's a Muslim. So is white folks. They're half, half the white community is Muslim. Same with the black community. You do not see Louis Farrakhan going around trying to threaten people to blow up their fucking houses. But it's like this. I think that the justice system is more fucked up. There, there are crooked cops. There are cops that don't want to do their jobs. And every day, innocent people get locked up for a crime they didn't commit. The prisons are overcrowded because these the detectives and the police don't want to do their job and get out their fat donut eating ass and put the time and effort in to find out who really did it. And that's all it is, man. I'm 10 ten like it is T I E. Well ladies and gentlemen, this has been Afro Joe Ten Like T I E is again because you know how I am. It's some shit. I'm gonna do another video soon, but <laughs> that's how it is. 
like I said, man, do the right thing, man. Do the right thing. Peace. Look, follow me on Twitter at AfroJodaWookie. Follow me on Tumblr. I'm from a Tumblr shit in the description box. Uh, subscribe to my channel, CeeLo Jr. 2, CeeLo Jr. 3. Tell me what you think about this, about these two stories. Do you think the comps are doing do you think the cops are doing the right thing about arresting innocent people? Do you, no, tell me what you think about both of these stories. Did they, did these eight people find justice? Did these eight people find justice? Did you think that the law really works for people? Because to me, it doesn't. When you can't do a damn thing, you can be an innocent. You can walk down the street and be arrested for walking down the street this bullshit like I said man I'm gonna love to get a comment or video, or video response please share this video with everybody peace love and Africa don't download my shit just take the link and pass it on to everybody else peace love and Africa peace out